Welcome to the Somme Vigil podcast series, which tells the story of the Battle of the Somme in the words of those who were there. I'm Simon Bendry, Director for UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. This series was commissioned by the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport and developed in partnership with the First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme and Chrome Radio. It was first released to accompany the Somme 100 Vigil at Westminster Abbey, held through the night of the 30th of June and into the morning of the 1st of July 2016, to mark the centenary of the Battle of the Somme. In this podcast, we hear from a member of the Heavy Machine Gun Corps, who was aboard Creme de Month in the first tank action. The tanks were a mixed success. As well as being dangerous to operate, they were an easy target for enemy artillery. Lionel McAdam was a gunner in one of the first tank crews. Having been barred from joining the Canadian infantry because he was too short, he paid his own passage across the Atlantic to join the British Army. He was in the heavy machine gun corps and aboard Creme de Month in that first tank action. One of the crew was struck by a flying splinter just after we started, and our tank, the Creme de Month, was forced to go into action with only six men and our crew commander. We proceeded to a place just in front of our own line, where we had to wait for daybreak. All night long, the terrific cannonading went on. Creme de Month took two hits on the tail, which blew half of it away. The explosion of each shell lifted the 35-tonne monster onto her nose and then let her drop again with a bang which shook the crew pretty thoroughly. Zero hour for the Canadians was 5.30am on the 15th. We started the engine and, when a lull in the firing gave us the signal, we started off. Dawn was just breaking and there was a little ground mist which slowly disappeared as the sun came up. We moved along at the rate of about two or three miles an hour, pitching in and out of the shell holes and over all sorts of obstacles. In the mist, we could make out the forms of our men following us up. Machine guns were pattering all over the side of our old bus, and the infantry outside were catching it rather hard. As soon as the mist cleared sufficiently for the Germans to see us, their fire died away appreciably. Creme de Month and Cordon Rouge were running parallel courses about 200 yards apart. We reached Sugar Trench together and stopped with our guns pointed at a mass of Germans in the trench. The infantry came up and took all these as prisoners. Lionel McAdam was wounded in January 1917, but soon returned to active service, salvaging and repairing broken-down tanks from the battlefield. He returned to Canada in 1919, where he resumed work as an electrical engineer with the Toronto Transit Commission. He married and had two sons. He lived in Toronto until his death in 1973, aged 82. You have been listening to The Story of the Somme, a Chrome Radio production for the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, in partnership with UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. The producer was Katrina Oliphant. In the next podcast, a member of the Cameron Highlanders recalls how, by the autumn of 1916, heavy rain had turned the Somme battlefields into a sea of mud.